let me tell you something, Justin. There is pain in the faces you do not see. There is suffering in the voices you do not hear. And there is distress and even chaos in the places you do not go. If you don't believe me, come with me over to the local grocery store in East End, Ottawa, where I was last night, where a 60-year-old plus cook came up to me with tears in his eyes to tell me he has to delay his retirement. But you know the thing that really broke him? That he can no longer afford the very ingredients to cook at home that he works with in his job at work. Justin, if you don't believe me, come to Northern Ontario and ask the elderly woman who lives in the cold because your carbon tax has made it too expensive for her to heat her home. If you don't believe me, Justin, come speak to the students who live in homeless shelters while they go to school because the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Toronto after eight years of your leadership is $2,500 a month. That's more than a 100% increase since you took office and you've done absolutely nothing to incentivize the construction of new and affordable homes for our young people. If you don't believe me, Justin, go to the food banks where 1.5 million people go to eat in a given month. Stay around long enough. You might hear from some of the people who come to the food bank asking for help getting medical assistance and dying. Not because they're sick, but because they're too poor and too miserable after eight years of your leadership to go on living like this. If you don't believe me, Justin, go talk to the families of the 30,000 people who've lost a loved one to drug overdoses after you favored policies that flooded our streets with heroin and fentanyl and you tied the hands of our police and prevented them from doing anything about it. After you failed to hold the scumbag corporations who brought these drugs to our streets accountable. Companies, companies like McKinsey, Mr. Trudeau, companies to whom you continue to give hundred million dollars worth of contracts. Mr. Trudeau, if you don't believe me, Go to the now permanent encampments that have taken over large parts of formerly prosperous and bustling communities in our cities like Vancouver, Toronto, and Peterborough. If you don't believe me, take a trip to the city transit, Mr. Trudeau, in Toronto, where 40 homeless people are forced to spend the night because your policies have made it impossible for them to get a home where crime now rages out of control and women say they're afraid to even get on the train on june 17th the toronto tra uh, ttc a woman in her 20s died of her injuries after she was set on fire december 8th a fatal stabbing on on line two train at high park station left a 31 year old woman dead and injured the suspect was wielding an ice pick. If you don't believe me, Mr. Trudeau, get on one of those trains and talk to the people who will tell you the story of a woman who was stabbed in the head and face on a Spadina streetcar just south of Bloor Street. She was taken to hospital with life-altering injuries. These are not one-off stories, Justin. Crime is up 32% since you took office. Violent gang crime up 90% two percent after eight years in office you are responsible for the criminal code for the borders that bring in the illegal guns you are responsible for our national police force and after eight years you have given you have given canadian cities that are turning into crime zones this is your record mr trudeau and meanwhile illegal border crossings have exploded crossings that were almost unheard of when you took office. This is eight years. You told us that better was always possible, and yet everything is worse, and you blame everyone else. And we know what you will do this session of Parliament. You will divide to distract. You'll try to make people afraid of each other, because you think that if 
an average Canadian is afraid of his neighbor, he'll forget that he can't feed himself or pay the rent. You'll try to take all the responsibility off of yourself and to put it on others. You'll claim you have nothing to do with any of these files, as though, as a federal prime minister, you're not responsible for the federal criminal code. As a federal prime minister, you're not responsible for the chaotic federal airports. That as a federal prime minister, you're not responsible for the half trillion dollars of federal debt that you have added that led to a 40-year high in inflation. If you're not responsible for any of these things, if you can't do anything about it, then why don't you get out of the way and let someone lead who can? Yeah.